Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to put together a two-page spread for extra credit. So this is kind of how it should turn out. Um, maybe you can do something a little more creative than this. Maybe not. Either way, I just want to use this extra credit opportunity as a way for you to um, add something interesting to your portfolio uh, in Behance. Let's see if we can get this guy down. So I was just playing with that a little bit. Um, so let me show you how I got this far. Um, all right, so let's go new document. Now what I want is a two page spread. I want each page to be eight and a half by 11. I work in inches usually. So I automatically change my units to inches so I understand what I'm looking at. The orientation doesn't matter. I like big fat wide pages. It doesn't matter. All of this detail does not matter unless you're working with a printer. You're doing it for fun, so do whatever you want. But in order to get the facing pages, you have to hit three and then check facing pages. The rest of it we're going to leave as is. Create. All right, so if you zoom out, you'll see that one page I was forced to create and then the two pages of the magazine spread. Um, there's probably a way to get rid of this solitary page, but I haven't found it. And last year when I was teaching this, I looked for a while and didn't find it. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. If you do figure that out, how to make just a two-page spread, let me know. Anyway, um, so the first thing you want to do, I would think, is um, to figure out where to put a headline. I'm going to put it in the standard place. I'm going to go to the article, um, and then I'm going to use the text tool to draw a box as to where I want this to go. So I'm going to make part of it pretty big on the page. I'm going to make it about that size. When I hit paste, it's not going to look big at all. Um, but I basically, when it does get big, I don't want it to leave the confines of the box I just drew. So now we go to character. And this is where I can change the size and change the font. So I want to pick a font that looks sort of um, space age. I've got a lot of fonts on here that doesn't that don't look space age. Uh, I don't know. There's so many options. I'm just going to pick um, this one I used before. It's called Archive. And I'm just going to start making the size bigger by hitting the first T. So if I were to stop right there, that would be fine, but it would be a little boring. The brave new, why don't I return it at World of Sports and then I'll make World of Sports really big. So I can keep clicking on that. I can also go down here, just change that to 60. It's a giant World of Sports but we can play with color. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to make that like a bright orange and that'll really pop out. Okay. The brave new world of sports. And then I'm going to make the giant all caps, maybe something that'll go with the orange really well. So let's see how that is. Eh. That, now it looks like maybe the Baltimore Orioles. But anyway, I think that's okay. I do want Brave New to stand out. So maybe I'll um, change the color of that, make it even brighter. There you go. That's it. So you see how I did that? I just double-clicked on the T there, and it brought me to that color palette. Now I think these two words are a little far apart. So I'm going to select them both. And I'm going to change the letting. That's the up and down space between them. Let's see if it lets me do it. It might uh, make me do it, make, make me only like put the cursor next to the bottom word. Let's see. Did that make a difference? Yeah, so I selected the bottom word and it's nudging it up. So that's a little bit advanced. You can ignore that um, or just, you know, play with the color, do whatever you want. So that's how you make a headline. 
The next thing is I want to figure out, um, boy, that was a giant headline. That might even be too big for the text that we have. But I want to figure out where the body copy is going to go. So I, I want it to be in these four columns. So I'm going to draw boxes of where I want the copy to land. That box. Then I'm going to draw another one over here. I don't want them to overlap because I think things will get confusing. Another nice big box here. And then another one over here. So you might be saying, well, where's my image going to go? Let's put the type in first, and then um, we will add the image. So let me copy all of this. Bip, 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 bip. It's a long article. And after I copy and paste it, I'm going to delete some of those other things that it caught. All right, so I am going to go ahead and paste this type in that box. And one thing you're going to see, even though I pasted all of it, I'm getting, I'm not, it's not showing me all the entire article. So what you do is you grab the white arrow tool and you click right in the center there real hard until you see this funny little paragraph. And then you just select the next, you click on the next box. And that is called flowing type. So it should have another little one right there. So you hover over that box again. You click really hard until you get another little paragraph. See if there's any more. Okay, there's one more. Click until you see the paragraph and paste. So that is a lot of type. Um, one way I can reduce the type is get rid of um, some of this extra stuff in here that I didn't mean to um, grab. That word advertise. Um, and then there's like um, photo, some photo um, notes. I'm going to take off the Getty Images thing there. Um, and then these are, this is a sidebar that was in there. Anything else? That's about it. Okay. So the next thing I might do is um, edit these text boxes a little bit so they're not bumping into each other so much. I just moved that one a little bit. And then um, I could just go ahead and put the image right here. I could also decide that I want the image to be of uh, the top or the bottom half. So I do want my image to be major important here. I, the whole point of doing this is just so that you can see it. So um, let me go ahead and make my headline a little smaller. And then also I'm going to move these text boxes up. I'm going to put article by New York Times, etc. in a second. But I want to uh, give myself as much space as possible. Okay, so the next thing is I want to add my illustration and I want it to be half the page. So I'm going to ignore that there's type in there for now. And then I'm going to import my image. So you go to edit, or no, sorry, you go to file place, and then you just find an image. So here is my illustration. All right, so I put my illustration in there, and what it did is it centered it for me. And that's fine. If this was bigger, um, let's say I wanted to see the whole thing. You right click on it and you choose fitting. And then you decide what you want. Fit frame proportionately. Let's see what that does. So that filled um, the frame with my illustration. You know, I kind of do like that, but if this was really my illustration, I would be irritated that um, the whole thing isn't showing. So let me click on fitting again. Fit content proportionally. Okay, so there's my entire illustration, right? All right, I'm fine with that. It didn't fill up the whole page like I wanted, but um, it's still my illustration. So let's say um, you wanted to move it around a little bit. Use the white arrow tool to move it within the frame 
the first like X box that you created. Um, so maybe I don't want that uh, signature in there, or maybe I do want to zoom in a little. Use the white arrow tool to do that. Anyway, so look, we got a problem with the text. What are we going to do? I actually like the idea of my illustration being right in the center there, but I don't want the text to wrap all the way around that. So what I want to do is actually select, let's see if I got it. No, that's not what I want to do. I want to select the boxes, the box rather, of just the illustration and make it a little smaller on either side. So that is moving the text. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to get my black arrow tool and I'm going to move this off the page so that I can, let's see if I can even do this. I want to move it off the page so that I can adjust the bounding boxes. I want it to um, move those in. There's probably a command to shrink bounding box to fit, but um, I don't know what it is, so this is easier. All right, so now the bounding box, the picture container, fits my type, or my illustration, rather. Sorry. All right, so there it is. I'm going to leave it right there. I think it's interesting right there, but the problem is now I can't read the type. So... You now, um, let's see, let me put on pause to make sure I'm speaking correctly. Hold on. Okay. Basically, I had to change my window view, the workspace, to um, digital publishing in order to get these things up here. Um, so you go to window, workspace, and then choose digital publishing. But you select your image, and then you go up here. And this wraps the text around it. So wrap around object shape. All right, and as long as you can still read the type, that's probably good. If you've got a shape that's like a snake or some um, odd shape, the text is gonna fill the curves and whatever. And uh, you don't want that because it'll just be hard to read. You wanna keep the viewer in mind. All right, so you can also tell the box, uh, let's see if this is it. No, this isn't the right spot. There's a place to tell the type um, how close you want that text to be. So hold on, I'm going to find that. Okay, to make things easier, I just looked it up. Um, text wrap is what we're working with. So there's a text wrap window under window. So that makes things a lot easier. And you can tell it... Um, what kind of border you want around the image. I want it to be um, left and right. So maybe that one doesn't allow that wrap around object shape. Yeah, so perhaps I wanted the second one wrap around bound, bounding box. And I want it all to be even. So 625, 625 all the way around. I still want it to be more, especially on the right side, because I think the type is a little tight to the image. That looks better. And then from there, I can adjust it. So um, that's it, basically. And, and now from here, um, if this was something I was seriously working on, I would think about uh, readability. Like, this looks a little funny down here. I think there needs to be a return. All right, this is, uh, okay, these are captions for an image. Don't need those there. To make it easier to read, one thing you do in design is you get rid of any words that have a hyphen, so I would hit return wherever I saw that. And then this doesn't look good all by itself there, so I might just return this whole paragraph so that doesn't happen and then it's a little more even now this is super weird right here drugs and performance I don't like that so I'm gonna select the box hello and then I'm gonna tell the text not to wrap so much up at the top that's better so now that's easier to read anyway that's and then again I would get that guy so it's a game back and forth trying to fix that and then finally, I would put in um, a caption.
For example, I would put 